they consume 2 billion gallons a day of river water. And what that means is it goes in one end cold and comes out the other end hot. And in the process, it kills a lot of fish eggs and fish larvae. That's more than 10% of the river flow. Uh, the, fish, the fish eggs in the river get killed by, by running through this power plant. So that's a concern, and that had been a concern for for several years, and and was um, was in uh, in court in in New York State. That basically the uh, Riverkeeper has uh, one of the organizations in New York State asked to have the, the cooling towers put in, which is um, a separate cooling system rather than using the river, and um, uh, that was progressing until Fukushima, uh, pretty much on a on a on a single course. But Fukushima shows us that you need a bigger emergency planning zone than 10 miles, and, and Indian Point has a 10-mile uh, pl- emergency planning zone. New York City is 26 miles from New York. And of course, if you're following Fukushima, there was a 50-mile um, evacuation ordered by the United States State Department. So the question is, hey, if it's good enough for Japan, why isn't it good enough for New York State? And so now the issue at Indian Point is not just killing the fish in the river, but um, planning to evacuate New York City as well as uh, anybody within 10 miles of the plant. Doesn't it drive you crazy to think of only 10 miles when we're talking about nuclear energy and fission products, that 10 miles? It's crazy. It was crazy 40 years ago when they built the plant. Um, everybody knew in the industry that Indian Point was an outlier, that, that there was no, um, no logical reason why Indian Point should be there except that it was. <laughs> and um, you know, basically there's been arguments uh, for 40 years that emergency planning at Indian Point would, be, would result in a, in a disaster if ever an accident were to occur. You're absolutely right. It's obvious. In one of the segments that you did that I watched, you said that when these reactors were planned 40 years ago, they were visioning the worst imaginable scenario of 1% fuel failure with a containment that leaked one-tenth percent per day. Am I correct? Yes, that's correct. One month before Fukushima, that was the worst that anybody would, would uh, analyze for. Here's my question to you. If right now we're at 70% fuel and containment with a hole in the side of the reactor at Fukushima, isn't there a core disconnect in a almost sociopathic relationship to even imagining worst case scenarios to be that far off? What is it, a thousand percent off? It's a thousand percent off. You're absolutely right. You know, the NRC has said that uh, American reactors are safe, but uh, they're going to take 90 days to, um, to look at them the considerations. And um, I hope things like containment integrity are one of the things they're going to look at, but I'm not confident they will. The, um, we just heard on Friday from uh, Representative Markey in Massachusetts that the NRC is limiting the time that their inspectors spend to 40 hours on each reactor. And they're not allowed to look outside the box. In other words, they're not allowed to say, wow, that assumption is really too low. We need a tougher assumption. Um, so the NRC is constraining their inspectors so that they won't, um, they won't find anything. I want to talk to you about plutonium. A few weeks ago, I did a short interview with Dr. Helen Keldegott, and plutonium seems to be a huge deal. I know people are worried about the radioactive iodine and cesium-137, and then we can talk about all that. But I really want you to talk to us about plutonium and how come it is that, what was it, 10,500 tons of radioactive water were poured back into the ocean at Fukushima a few weeks ago? I was horrified hearing this. How is that possible to do that? Well, what happened at Fukushima, let's talk about the water first and then the plutonium. Is that okay? Sure. Okay. What happened at Fukushima with the water was that they ran out of tanks. And the radioactive water that was really, really, really radioactive had to go somewhere. So they emptied tanks that were only really, really radioactive to put the really, 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 really radioactive stuff into it. And so um, (laughs) 
they, they had to do it. There, there was no place to put the water. So they emptied tanks that contained 10,000 times the maximum permissible concentration because the other stuff was a million times the maximum concentration. But the, it's not over. They're going to fill those tanks as well because the units are still leaking water. And um, they may have to do it again, which would, uh, uh, which would be much, much more radioactive than the highly radioactive stuff they already put in. Now, that contains things like uh, cesium-137, and that gets absorbed in brown algae and gets eaten by um, little fish that get eaten by bigger fish and uh, can work its way up. Cesium is a muscle uh, that attaches to your muscles. So, of course, when you eat fish, you eat the meat, the muscle, uh, and you can pick up cesium from the fish. They've already found cesium in the, uh, in the fish about 40 miles away from the plant. So it clearly is, um, is spreading, and uh, I would expect it would spread even more. Now, your plutonium question is, is, um, is, is, is really a great question. When, when the nuclear reactors um, began their meltdown, most but not all of what they release is things like cesium and iodine and strontium-90 and um, all of which are radioactive and all of which are carcinogenic. Plutonium is a bigger molecule and is a little heavier, so uh, not too, too much of it goes airborne unless the fuel melts down and there's a fuel fire. Well, that's what happened in Unit 4. Unit 4 is the, is the one reactor that wasn't running, but all of the fuel was in the fuel pool, and the fuel pool got very hot, boiled dry, and caught on fire twice. Um, they found nuclear fuel rods, parts of nuclear fuel rods, as far away as two miles from uh, Unit 4. Um, could have also come from Unit 3. But those rods contain plutonium. Now they're finding small particles of plutonium um, on, the, on the ground around the plant, which means that the plutonium was um, what they call volatilized, turned into a, um, essentially light air, like a piece of dust. Now, Brookhaven, Brookhaven National Labs, did a study, and if there was a fuel pool fire and the fuel, pool, and the fuel burned, it could result in about 120,000 fatalities from the plutonium because it goes airborne and causes lung cancer. And um, so the, the worst case of Fukushima is not the three reactors that are melting down, but Unit 4, which has all of its fuel in the fuel pool and the building has the roof blown off it. In one of your videos, you talked about one gram, a dollar bill, into a million pieces, and a microgram can cause a lethal cancer. Can you explain that? Yeah, that's a, 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 um, there's a plutonium atom has a, um, a really powerful alpha ray. And an alpha ray doesn't penetrate your skin if it's outside your skin. But if you breathe it in and it lays up against your lung tissue, uh, at that point there's nothing to stop it from damaging your lungs. And so a microgram, a millionth of a gram, can cause, a, uh, um, can cause lung cancer. And that's exactly what Brookhaven was concerned about. When you burn nuclear fuel, you will create these little tiny particles of plutonium and, um, uh, and that can cause uh, you know, many, many lung cancers. I thought the example of a dollar bill broken up into a million pieces was an interesting analogy showing about how small plutonium has to be to be lethal. It's a powerful example. I teach at the, at the local community college, and one of the things I teach is grams. And, and a dollar bill is almost exactly a gram. It's, it's, a, it's a perfect, you know, if you need something to hold in your brain, um, the weight of a dollar bill and the weight of a gram are about the same. You talked about plutonium being in the trenches. Yes. And without breach of containment, and that there's a leakage of a seal scenario. Can you talk about that? Well, it's actually worse than that now. Um, since I wrote that, they've, uh, um, the, the problem has gotten worse. Um, I, I postulated a way for the uh, radioactive water to get out of the reactor. And let's, let, let's talk about it. A reactor is nothing but a pressure cooker. 
just a, a okay. glorified pressure cooker. And it sits inside a box called...